Pick a track, pick a time Any day is fine Pack a bag, say you do Let's sail off me and you on another adventure In this episode, I've worked very hard to record and document all of the procedures in my recent outboard rebuild. This rebuild is also orchestrated around the necessity to improvise, as we do not have a pristine mechanics facility with all tools available and also do not have the availability to order in any parts. We are on an island in the middle of the Caribbean on a sailboat. After being ran over, sank, and sitting on the deck to oxidize for five months, this crankshaft actually pickled out very well and held me over for two months until I could locate this much nicer crankshaft. Video, but these bearings are in much better shape. This bearing is in incredible shape compared to what I put in there. Um, all the rods still move. This bearing was a little questionable, which is sad because uh, that's the bearing that's bad right now. Um, we have the uh, one piston is good for my old setup, so that'll go on here. Um, we, we left off last episode where we had just discovered the problem with the rusty, not so trusty crankshaft, and here's the rest of the story. We're taking our little bundle of joy up to see a friend for some soft honing. Hi, how are you doing? You like our bundle of joy? Yeah, I see something there. I'm gonna do some honing, hon. First things first, I phoned a friend to borrow a honing tool. Highly recommend it if you're this far into an engine. The stones on this tool provide an even surface that actually sands the inside of the cylinder. The up and down motion is to crisscross your sanding strokes at 45 degree angles. So we've got to clean the bit of thread locker off of this surface and this surface. Um, very important when you're cleaning this surface. This, this doesn't have a gasket. It has to seal itself. You can put thread locker in here. Um, do not scratch the surface. Um, use a razor blade a lot to remove gaskets. If you use one on this, make sure it is brand new out of the package. Zero burrs. You cannot damage this surface at all. It's very, very sensitive. And this is where your crankshaft lays. And pinches in there and then we have a few other gasket surfaces down here for the uh power head gasket is not you know we can silicone this a bit it's a little bit of wiggle room there not with this one so be careful here all right let's do this <coughs> Hello. see how it's just lifting that thread locker there very carefully I like to go ahead and continue cleaning all the gaskets when I start, and you can always touch these back up as you go through your assembly. On the head gasket surfaces, after removing everything with a blade, it is important to use a very fine grit sandpaper and plane the surfaces because this area of the case is exposed to extremely high heat from the combustion chambers. This is only effective if the sandpaper is on a very flat surface. Do not apply sanding pressure with your fingers. Also take note of the alignment pins in the top right and bottom left. Things will have to be removed and replaced before and after sanding. Make sure to remove all the dirt and grit once all the gasket surfaces are cleaned. Gasoline makes a good parts cleaner substitute if it's all you have on board. Always be careful rubbing the crankcase or anything in the engine with your fingers as some surfaces may be sharp. Clean both head gasket surfaces with an alcohol or solvent to remove any greases or residues. With this motor, the torque specifications are listed clearly on the head as is the bolt pattern, working in a somewhat outwards clockwise pattern as per standard with most gaskets. You can usually also find this information through your manufacturer online. Sometimes the bolt torque specifications are easier to find through the bolt diameter than the manufacturer and make. Be sure to press the gasket onto both set pins and that all bolt holes and coolant jackets are lined up in the block correctly.
After applying a little thread locker and getting all the bolts good and started with your fingers, you can use the socket to help everything get slightly snug and then start tightening everything down with your handy dandy torque wrench. Slowly increase the torque as you rotate through the bolt pattern clockwise. For instance, if you need 30 foot-pounds, start with 10 for full rotation on every bolt and then 20 and then 30 and so on until desired torque. So you get one ring out. This pinch to push pretty easily. And get the other pin out. Oop. Try not to throw them overboard. It's very important. You can flip this over and catch all of these in the piston if you want. It's gonna puke its guts out in just a minute. There we go. You see all these little needle bearings in here. Yeah, those still look really good. Those have been running in the outboard and that just blew. So it's good to see that they look nice. They all Make sure when you put this back in, that you orient it correctly as you can see these are going to arrow to the exhaust side arrow to the exhaust side here um, and just make sure that there is these pockets here whenever the stroke is happening inside the engine this is what allows your intake and exhaust lay out all your goodies make sure you have them all We're about to use a thicker marine grade grease and this is just to hold things in place and help us with assembly. If you do the homework from earlier, you will soon understand how a two-stroke is lubricated by the oil you mix in the gas and why a four-stroke needs crankcase oil, so don't forget to look that up. And we're just getting our bearings set up for success right now. Roll around. And then you put it down on the first one, and you should, oh, oh, if you have a really steady hand and you're not on a rocking boat, you should be able to get all those in there. If you miss some, it's okay. Just give a press all around. You'll see a few gaps, no problem. Take your missing guys and put them in those gaps. Okay, now we take one of these rings, put it on this side. Example. There we go. Got one of the rings. And very steady. Should be able to slide all those in there. Look at that. And then put this on the other side. It helps to give it some grease. The grease is just gonna hold it stuck in place until we get everything how we want it. So it's gonna be our friend for now. Again, make sure your pistons are oriented correctly, both facing the exhaust. Pick this up. I'm gonna rotate that so we have a little bit more room. I'm gonna slide this in there and then we'll be able to slide this back into place. Put back in on here. There we go. Okay, flip it around. This one in. Start it off. Make sure to keep your thumb on here to prevent it from springing and jumping overboard, especially if you don't have any spares. There you go, it's set in. And there we go, now it's in the clip. Just give it a rotation to make sure it's good and in there. As a good precaution to make sure when you first start up that everything is lubricated because it could be a little dry. And then slide that bad boy on. That seal sets real nice. Um, I also want to grease a little bit in here. And these. 
See, normally your wives get mad when you use the kitchen Tupperwares and dishes. I don't have to worry about that. Just before final assembly, especially on a Caribbean build like this, I like to add two-stroke oil and the piston rings and all bearings and moving parts in the engine. This will help set them up with a little lubrication boost on the first start and wash away any solvents. Now, as we go to line up for this, on these pistons, they're only going to collapse one way. If we look here, you see that little pin? So this gap has to be lined up there. And I'm going to, there we go, one and two. There's one and two. And this is a very, very wonderful engine. It actually kind of just, if you work it in there, will collapse your rings as it goes down. As these cylinders slowly taper at the beginning there. Don't force it, just wiggle it so that it can do its job. And once you get really low, you'll see you gotta start lining up that. Let's see, we got one here, there, there. This one's gonna come this way a bit, and there. All right, so you set that ring on there, down into its home. Line all these up. Yay! All right, so now on the surface, we want to clean all the oils off with like an alcohol or something because we're going to put down a thread locker. Make sure you have no oils on your fingers. Alright, once it's landed, definitely want to try to get these on sort of as quick as possible. Just a tiny bit of this stuff. Just like with the head gasket, progressively tighten all the bolts in a crisscross rotational type pattern until you reach desired torque specification for the bolts. A little test run here. Put this on. packed as much as I could into that 15 minute episode. I know I couldn't cover it all, but I did my best. Um, we got another episode coming up. Got to finish putting this thing all the way back together. Very exciting. It's still running awesome today. I have tons of updates in another adventure world. She's in the boatyard. Things are happening. We jumped in mud volcanoes. Very exciting stuff. And I know we're all in quarantine. So I'm editing. Hopefully I'm entertaining you and we can learn a little while we're here. Have a good day, wash your hands, and stay safe out there. And don't forget, for the first time ever, Another Adventure finally has shirts promoting some dinghy awareness, fun in the spinnaker, of course some motivational thoughts, and I will be sure to leave a link to that store in the description of this video. Jump on in, grab a line, the water's feeling fine, catch a fish, maybe two, let's sail off me and you on another adventure. On another adventure Let's sail off me and you On another adventure